Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Kizu Monogatari, but today I'm going to be checking out the final film of the trilogy, Raiketsu, or Cold-Blooded, the perfect follow-up to Hot-Blooded. But last time, Araragi had to hunt down the three vampire hunters, facing them one by one. Of course, he started off with Dramaturgy, who happened to be a full-blooded vampire himself, and at first, Araragi was getting owned, just straight up, getting his limbs sliced off, left and right, but because of his OP vampire powers, he was able to regenerate them with ease. At first, it didn't seem like there was anything Araragi could do to overpower the guy, because he was just this hulking, eight-foot-tall monster, but he did have one trick up his sleeve. He managed to put some distance between them and started chucking some baseballs at him, which, of course, at first, didn't do anything. Even with his enhanced strength, the baseballs just bounced right off of him. But the trick was, there weren't just baseballs in there. They were shot put balls, and he chucked some shot put balls at him and nailed him right in the face. At first I didn't catch that, that they were shot put balls, and now it makes a lot more sense <laughs> why Dramaturgy was being so complacent about it, because if someone's just chucking baseballs at you and they're bouncing off of you, you wouldn't really be trying to dodge them all too much. So whether Araragi did that on purpose or not by putting the shot put balls in there, it really works to his advantage. With Dramaturgy down, he went after Episode, another interesting name. All of them have really interesting names. <laughs> They're all really odd, but anyway. Episode had a proficiency in turning into mist. Apparently all the vampires can kind of do that, but Episode just really loves to do it. He makes a, a whole strategy out of it. He also wielded the giant cross, which he used to great effect to smack Araragi around a bit. But where he messed up was with Hanekawa. Because you see, she managed to get mixed up in the battle and got her freaking side torn open by the thing. Pretty much killing her right then and there. Araragi did his best to stuff her insides back in, but to no avail, and then he went freaking beast mode. He just did exactly what's on the screen behind me <laughs> and just started running, man, and jumped up to a nearby stadium because Hanekawa gave him one very important tip that he can turn in the mist. And because he can turn in the mist, Araragi thought if he could cover him in sand, it would prevent him from turning into mist, which it did, and then he just kind of choked him out a bit. But Oshino Meme was there to keep him in line because <laughs> Araragi went nuts, man. Wouldn't you? If, 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 if a girl you knew and liked just got freaking disemboweled right before your very eyes, you'd probably choke out the guy too and just break his neck, but Oshino reminded him to stay grounded, remain human, and just let him go, which is what he did. Lastly came Guillotine Cutter. <laughs> what a name that one is. Way dramatic and edgy right there, but he didn't even actually get to fight Guillotine Cutter. You know why? Because he kidnapped Hanekawa. Yep, apparently his, uh, his church allows that kind of thing. It's perfectly just within their religion, which I assumed that his, that his church that he came from was in some way related to Jesus Christ because, you know, he, he does have crucifixes all over his design, but I mean, they are hunting vampires. So that's probably mostly why they have them, but I guess his church may not necessarily be Christian in nature. It's not at all specified what it is, but that's beside the point. The point is, with Hanakawa kidnapped, he had all the bargaining chips and he tried to make Araragi surrender, but he didn't. Faced with this situation, Oshino advised him to abandon his humanity. Just ditch it entirely, even though he said not to do that before, he had no choice here, and he just unleashed his full vampiric power, which was to transform his arms into tree limbs and just overtake Guillotine Cutter instantly, ending the fight like it was nothing, putting him up inside of a giant tree and strapping him to a cross. Fitting. Now, if I may say one thing, one detail I need to go into was Hanekawa and Araragi, her liking him. I was very critical of Araragi. I, I, I made fun of him a lot for not seeing how blatantly obvious it was, but it is important to remember how Araragi is and why he wasn't seeing it in the first place. We have already gone over this in that in that Araragi just had such low self-esteem. He, th he thought so little of himself that he could not possibly think for a second that Hanekawa liked him without being told it straight out. 
by a literal manifestation of her stress who knew and felt everything she did, so... Yeah. He was in a pretty bad place. And really, I can't be too critical of him for it, because... Honestly, genuinely, I know exactly how he feels. I have literally been in that position before myself. Not to the same extreme, but... I know how he feels, so I can't really tear him apart too much for it, but... I guess that's why I was being so critical of him, just because... Having gone through it, it hit close to home. So it's not at all unrealistic for Aurobagi to not be able to see it, even though she's literally taken off her underwear and handing it to him as a favor. He's just that down on himself. But hey, pretty sure I've rambled on more than long enough at this point. All that matters is that the last movie was great. I liked the higher emphasis on action that they brought to the table, as well as the furthering of the development of Hanekawa and Aragi, that was great too. So, without further ado, let's just get into Raiketsu. So, Kizu Monogatari as a whole, how was it? Fantastic. Really good, all the way through. I mean, I thought the backstory of this all would be, would be interesting, but man, it was just way more interesting than I actually initially thought. And I thought it was already going to be interesting. When they showed those brief little flashbacks of, of of the stuff of Kizu, I was like, wow, that looks cool. I want to see that. And it delivered on it. It did wonders for delving into the characterizations of Araragi and Shinobu and uh, Hanekawa as well, especially the three of them and uh, the circumstances of everything that occurred during their spring break was just bonkers, dude. After all that they endured. Man, I gotta go back and watch the first episode of Baki again or something, just so I can see the contrast to all of this and just get that full perspective on, on Araragi. It, it really helps uh, show a lot about his character in hindsight. These three movies have helped elevate Monogatari into some legendary status with me, you know? Just because, like, it really did a great job when it came to keeping the dialogue and stuff engaging. Because even Bake, if I'm gonna be honest, there were some episodes in there where some of what they were talking about wasn't as engaging. It might have just been me at the time where I wasn't in the right mindset, but at least in the case of these three movies, I was hooked the whole time. And it had just about everything you could want. It was balanced. Because, you know, it had it had the, the great dialogue, it had the romantic stuff going on between Araragi and Hanekawa, and it had action. Lots and lots of bloody, gruesome freaking action, man. If you like that stuff, look no further. And even after all that they went through in the first episode, was it the second? I think it was the first one. Araragi still had the gall <laughs> to go to talk about Shinobu and be like, ah, she's just a failed vampire. She's nothing. Don't worry about her. <laughs> Gosh, she was not. I knew there was more to it. I knew she had a lot of <laughs> intrigue and she was a great character. I freaking knew it, Araragi. You fucking liar. And I didn't talk about it yet, but that scene with Araragi and Hanekawa where he's like, hey, you gotta let me touch your boobs. It's the only way I can win. And he really, he really leaned into it. Like, he was, like, for a moment there, he was starting to come out of his shell a little bit. He was starting to be confident. But then, because of everything he was saying, and then, but, <laughs> but he still, he still wimped out in the end. After, right at the moment of truth, he wimped out. He was a chicken, a coward. He got called out for it. And the funny thing is, it still didn't hit him. He was he was just that pathetic in that moment and s still so down on himself, his self-esteem had crashed to negative points that she said, like, oh, I thought you were gonna go beyond that and then, oh, my first time would, be, would have been here on this gym mat. And then she said, I wouldn't have minded. And he still didn't realize it. I guess he thought she might have been being sarcastic, like that she was just, you know, messing with him. But no, sir. She was not. So, the three movies were beautifully animated, with an excellent score, and some of the deepest characterization that we've gotten out of the series yet. So, where do we go from here? Don't know. I actually don't 
No, what's next on the list? I haven't, I'm, I'm forgetting. I've, I've looked at the list before, but I don't quite recall what it is. Pretty sure it's like Nisei Monogatari or something, right? I think it's Nisei. I, th I think it was Nisei that they made next. Ah, yes, Nisei. That's what everybody's saying. So, Nisei Monogatari. I believe that one was the one that was produced next after Bake because Kizu got delayed, which still feels weird. <laughs> I can't imagine watching this like sixth or seventh or something in the frickin' list. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't feel right. I mean, knowing it, knowing all this information right now just feels good, you know? It adds a lot of context and hindsight for Bake, and getting it later, while it would still probably be effective, I just feel like it would probably just be waiting too long. Getting more depth into Araragi is something I appreciate, because the focus was less on developing Araragi in Bake, and more so on all the other characters that he was helping out every few episodes. Araragi was kind of taking a back seat to their development, which was fine, it was perfectly good like that, but there was a, a lot more to be gained with me seeing stuff about him get developed, because we saw the aftermath of this and how bad it made him feel, and now we're seeing exactly why that was, and it makes me really feel for him. And it especially makes Hanekawa more interesting, because she was also just kind of there in the background during Bake, kind of occasionally getting involved, and then you and they didn't convey as much the the depth of their relationship. There was hints about it, they 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 conveyed it relatively well, but this really sells it. But hey, before I ramble on any longer, I think that's gonna be it guys, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe to be updated on when Nisei Monogatari is going to begin sometime soon, pro probably just next week. They're, it's going to be back to the episodic format, so it's going to be way easier to just fit these into the schedule compared to sitting down for an hour and a half recording a movie reaction. But genuinely, I hope you guys enjoyed the Kizu Monogatari reactions. These were some of the most fun that I've had making reactions to Monogatari, definitely. And I hope you enjoyed watching them as much as I enjoyed making them. At this point, I can't wait to see what else the series has to offer. They left us pretty open with Bake. You know, a lot was resolved. There's still a lot more to to look into about other characters because their stories were definitely not finished. And who knows, maybe there's even going to be more new characters that will be introduced and they will explore them. I assume so, given that there's still, you know, probably within the realm of 80 episodes left. We have literally only just begun, man. <laughs> Jeez. Now, ah, well, for the time being, this is it. Hope to catch you guys at Nisei Monogatari, but till then, I will see you guys all later!